Good morning. It's Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Frog Gets a Wake-Up Call, and our scripture is Revelation chapter 3. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all the things you do, that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you're like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, I'm rich, I have everything I want, I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that's been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Also, buy white garments from me so you will not be shamed by your nakedness, and ointment for your eyes so you'll be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock, and if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and we'll share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious, and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. You know that old saw about finding the good in anyone? It's not in here. In this vision of Revelation, Jesus is dictating letters to John to the seven churches of Asia Minor. And when it comes to the church at Laodicea, he's got nothing good to say. The sticky part here is that when Jesus didn't find something good to say about them, he didn't follow my mother's advice. He didn't just keep his mouth shut. Instead, the letter is a scathing rebuke of a proud, content group prancing around in their miserable wretchedness. There's nothing good about lukewarm faith. The story about the frog and the kettle is evidence enough. Lukewarm water may feel comfortable to a frog placed in body temperature water in a pot on the stove. But if the water was boiling, he'd jump out like a rocket going off. On the other hand, if you raise the heat ever so slowly, the frog's body will adjust to the temperature until he just sits there and cooks to death. Such is the picture of the church at Laodicea, cooking to spiritual death in their comfortable complacency. They've got what they think they need and no longer have any desire to engage in hot pursuit of following Jesus. Like the fable about the emperor who was convinced his new invisible suit of clothes was the height of fashion and he pranced around naked for everyone to admire, the church at Laodicea was blinded by materialism and power bought with earthly riches. So, what does Jesus do? Cleans their clock, right? He slashes and minces them up like a frog in a blender. No, not at all. Jesus, in a matter-of-fact, tranquil tone, informs them that they're on the wrong path, and he warns them to repent, to get hot for the kingdom. He wants them to change their ways. And his crowning touch of mercy is to offer them, of all things, friendship. He tells them that they've put him on the outside with their attitudes, but he's standing at their door, knocking to come inside. This is the kindness of our Lord, one who is patient and loving and willing to have open arms for the sinner saint gone astray. The invitation is always extended to come back. For you today, it's easy to slip into complacency. There's a million excuses. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm not trained. Uh, i got things in the way. Fear, comfort, sickness, and on and on and on. And every one of those excuses is tied to temptation. And each one raises the temperature of the water in the cooking pot. So, wake up. It's later than we think. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.